Welcome to this video lecture. We're going to be talking about optimization with Python and SciPy, and specifically, how do you deal with multiple constraints? So we are going to be looking at this uh, same objective function we've been covering with our decision variables x0 and x1. We're still going to keep x0 and x1 bound between 0 and 10 for both of them. We're going to be dealing with two inequality constraints, which means that our h function is going to be a vector function, uh, so it'll have these two different elements in it. So this, this inequality and this inequality here. So if we look at a graph of this, uh, here we have x0 versus x1. This is our whole uh, feasible space uh, in terms of our upper and lower bounds on each variable. But now we have these two constraint lines, and recall that uh, our, for a feasible solution, that needs to be um, greater than or equal to both of these constraints. So it needs to be greater than or equal to this line and greater than or equal to this line, which means that now everything below either of those lines is going to be infeasible. So by visual inspection, you can see that our optimal solution is going to be here. This is the most you could um, this is the lowest value of the objective function that you can get without violating either of these constraints. So uh, when you find an optimal solution that is at a constraint, that means that that constraint is active. In the previous example, when we had just one constraint, that constraint was active because our optimal solution was on that constraint. Um, now it's looking like we're going to have two active constraints which uh, limits our degrees of freedom. We can no longer find any value of x0 or x1. Rather, we're going to be at this space where we are constrained uh, in both directions. So again, this is a fairly simple problem that's used just for illustrative purposes. But I'm going to show you how to formulate these constraints in Jupyter Notebook using the SciPy tool. So I'll just walk through the way this pro problem is formulated. We are importing the minimize function from scipy.optimize. We define our objective function just as we have defined it before. We now define these constraints. So now our constraints function is going to be a two-part function. It still has both constraints are still a function of the variables contained within our x vector, meaning x0 and x1, which just represent the two different elements of uh, the x vector. So now we are going to first uh, pre-allocate our h by saying it's going to be an array of two zeros. Then we actually define those values. So here we have our first constraint where the zeroth element of h has got to be equal to x1 minus 0 0.5 times x0 minus 4. And then the first element of h has got to be x1 plus 0 0.3 times x0 minus 9 or greater. So we're just defining this uh, multi-input and multi-output constraints function or this uh, vector function. So it has uh, two different elements, h0 and h1. And then we just tell this function uh, you're going to have this input of x and then based on what that input of x is you are going to return h. We still have these other elements. We define our, bound, our, our bounds for the problem and our initial guess. We tell it that we tell the optimizer that our constraints are both inequality uh, constraints, and then we compile everything back into this minimize function. The output of this is going to be this uh, object called the opt, which will give us a lot of different information about the optimization. So we compile that in here with telling it what the objective function is, what our initial guess is, what method we're using, our bounds, and our constraints. So I'm going to go ahead and solve. So based on those sets, that, that set of constraints, uh, we do find, um, we find that our objective function is minus 7.61. So it's not as good as either of the cases before because now our problem is more constrained. It's not able to find the same values of the objective function because it, it can't reach those without going into the infeasible region. We do find that our optimization terminated successfully, so that's great. This success equals true, and then this tells us what are the optimum values. So this is telling us x0 would be 6.25, and x1 would be 7.125. And again, I'm just going to plot uh, this function with our 
two different constraint lines on it. So here are these constraint lines, which I'm just calling x1 and x1a. Um, we're going to plot the objective function, the constraint lines, and also our optimal solution. So here I'm just doing a scatter plot uh, with red markers that just says plot x0 and x1 on this graph. Alright, so you can see our we do have two active constraints. The optimal solution is just where it was where we thought it would be um, based on visual inspection. And so now we're we're just slowly adding complexity to the optimization that we're trying to solve. We started with unconstrained, then we added a single constraint, and now we've added two constraints, and we're plotting the results to see uh, to confirm that uh, what the solution is 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 what makes sense visually. Again, I want to remind you, optimization problems get much, much more complex than this, but I'm trying to teach a framework for how to solve these optimization problems. So stay tuned for the next few videos where we'll just get deeper into optimization.